Um, just some uh, quick updates on our current status, health metrics, uh, planning, as well as communication and timeline. Um, here's uh, the faces of our students, and I, I just want to continue to share and show this with the community because this is truly who we are. It's about every learner every day. Um, and we are in the push to finish this school year strong and come back stronger in the fall. We've been celebrating our amazing staff during Educator Appreciation Week. We had National um, School Superhero, National Superhero Lunch Day, um, as well as Nurses Day this week. We have an administrative assistant. So lots of special days to recognize our staff throughout the district. And we have um, amazing staff who continue to work hard for every learner every day. Um, we are maintaining, we're um, in very um, solid place in our stretch to the finish line for the end of the year with both our hybrid and our remote learners. Our health metrics in the community are staying, remaining relatively stable. We continue to monitor those um, and we continue to monitor our metrics internally as well. And the positive thing is the overall positive cases remain low as a percent of our population and our implementation of um, strategies to mitigate risk is extremely high. So we are seeing um, very positive trends in terms of isolating cases and, and maintaining um, the health of everyone else. Um, we continue to follow the ISBE and IDPH requirements um, as even as things make, uh, we get minor changes and updates. Um, and so we continue the charge um, with taking these very seriously. Um, as President Quigley mentioned earlier, it is not the time to let our guard down, it's um, time to ensure that we're doing everything possible. Um, we've had questions um, about some um, facilities, operations, some health and safety protocols. We had a request to um, bring some information about ventilation. So um, what better way to show that than through um, another voice besides mine and um, through um, video. And so Mr. Blaney, our Director of um, Community Relations, um, put compiled uh, a video for us to take a peek inside of classrooms and a little bit behind the scenes with our um, maintenance team. So we'll go ahead and any changes made in education since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic? While the most visible adjustments are in the classroom, updates have also been made to something that is invisible but fills every cubic foot of available space. While the air quality in schools is drawing a lot of attention throughout the country, air quality has been monitored and improved in Valley View classrooms long before the pandemic began. So even before COVID, uh, our Department of Facility Operations has been responsible for uh, indoor air quality uh, throughout the school district. It's been critical. It's always been critical. There's a lot of studies that show the relevance to indoor air quality as it relates to the learning environment. Uh, a lot of people may not be aware of that, but the, the, uh, uh, the way the air moves through the space, the amount of fresh air, the amount of air um, exchange in a classroom is, is critical to the overall learning environment. As recommendations about air quality in classrooms has changed during the pandemic, VVSD building operations and maintenance has been able to adjust accordingly because of a regular schedule of updates and upgrades throughout the years of mechanical systems. As a result of COVID, uh, the guidelines for indoor air quality uh, has changed considerably. One of the biggest things is that the, the guidelines both published by the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Illinois State Board of Education uh, have come out with the document that actually states that you have to uh, increase or improve the air quality and the air ventilation in your classrooms, in the school. Detail some of the upgrades that your staff has had to make in our buildings because of changing recommendations due to COVID. Normally there's a percentage that you maintain of outside air in your, in your mechanical systems and your ductwork. We've increased that over time uh, because of COVID. And what that does is, is, is basically introduce a lot more uh, air from the outside, which brings in uh, much more cleaner air, I'll call it, uh, in, in our building systems. So how does all of this work? How does clean air go from the outside to the inside of our schools? We came to Romeoville High School. We met up with Steve Johnson from our building operations and maintenance staff, and he's going to give us HVAC 101. By the way, how do you know it's working? Take a listen. It all starts with the outside air. From the outside, we go through our dampers, through our filtration, depending on what mode we are, we're either heating or cooling. We go out to the building, we come back on the return, 
the return has two options of either mixing in with our outside air or exhausting straight out. One of the biggest changes in the recommendations has been requirements for filtration of outside air being brought into school buildings. The filters that, that uh, filter the return air and the outside air are these two filters here. They got a post and a pre-filter. The pre-filter catches all the pre-contaminants from the return and the outside air. After it goes through this filter, there's a secondary filter that is four inch that, that cleans the air even more. These filters are MERV, I believe, 13s or 14s. And the standard pre-COVID was eight, which was the standard industry filter um, that worked well. It basically caught everything that was out there. Now we've upgraded to a thicker filter to catch even more contaminants, dust. So it'll catch the viruses, flu, you know, and COVID and all the other uh, viruses out there. Bringing in fresh air, 100% of it, and it's going through there in the filters I showed you before, you can see through the vent here, and you can see the pre-filter, and that thicker post filter is behind that. Now, if it was too warm outside, these dampers would close to 30% um, because we still want to bring in fresh air to the building. One of the most important things to maintaining fresh air in a building is a constant exchange of air from the outside, the clean air, to the air inside the building. Now, my friend Rich here is going to open this door behind me, and basically what that does is it breaks a seal between the air that is coming into the building and being run through these filters for a moment, and you're going to get an indication of how intense the flow of air into our buildings is. Rich, go ahead. almost got sucked into the filter room. VVSD has always understood that properly filtered air is as important in creating an effective learning environment as any of the supplies that support student learning. In the past year, the needs have changed and VVSD has met those needs due to the flexibility and planning of building operations and maintenance. Fresh air in, on a continual basis in a classroom is critical uh, to the learning environment. You're basically trying to make sure that that air is moved, has moved around quite a bit. It's called a, um, air movement in the space, uh, but also that it's filtrated, meaning making it clean. So you're essentially trying to uh, introduce an air, env an environment of air that will help to support uh, a good, uh, solid learning environment. Clean and fresh air is just part of the commitment in VVSD to providing a safe learning environment for both students and staff. We have day porters working in each one of our buildings. They go around the building continually throughout the day and clean and sanitize high contact surfaces. Each one of our buildings is cleaned and sanitized every night. That includes the use of sanitizing misters. All these clean protocols, they extend and include our school buses. So if your student rides VVSD transportation from the moment they're picked up in the morning until the moment they're dropped off at night, you can be assured of a clean and safe environment. We are also using Pathosans products now in the district. These are environmentally friendly products and they are created from a mix. So we are able to stock plenty. There is not a chance that we're going to run out of these products. Also, we have installed plexiglass shields where they are needed and where they have been requested throughout the district. This is all part of our commitment to providing a clean and safe learning and working environment for VVSD students and staff. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blaney for production and thank you, Director uh, Mike Lopez, Assistant Superintendent Grizafi and the entire maintenance and operations team. As you can see, we have so many individuals working so hard behind the scenes on things that you never really see on the outside in addition to supporting our staff who are working directly with our students and families. So a huge thank you to their continued efforts to support at every step along this process. Um, and moving forward, um, we'll continue to enforce um, these reminders and ask that um, continue to partner with us um, in this important, important reminders of health and safety. 
the community vaccinations will continue to share this information. Um, just saw a news alert this afternoon that the FDA authorized vaccines for adolescents age 12 and up, the Pfizer vaccine. Um, I do know that the, the Bolingbrook, Village of Bolingbrook vaccine has taken pre-registration for the adolescents as well. And we are also continuing to work with the Will County Health Department on a weekly, sometimes daily basis um, in preparing to provide that surface, service at a larger extent um, for our community, for our children. Um, and we will um, explore offering an in-district clinic um, in the summer as well. So um, again, part of the larger effort to um, ensure that we're taking every step possible to limit risks and keep everyone um, as safe and um, healthy as possible. So please stay tuned for that. Share that information with those um, that you know. And I encourage parents to consider vaccination for their children. Talk to your healthcare provider and make um, a choice of, you know, if that's right for your child. And um, please um, reach out to one of the resources that are available in the community clinics. Our SHIELD testing pilot program is beginning tomorrow, um, and that's at Bolingbrook and Romeoville High Schools. This will run throughout the summer um, into December 2021. This is a partnership with the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Illinois State Board of Education and the Uni University of Illinois with the SHIELD Illinois saliva um, test that we are using as a screener. Um, and so we have the students and staff who have consented, um, provided consent thus far, will begin um, tomorrow morning. So we will learn a lot from this process and determine how we will um, continue to utilize this tool to um, identify cases as early as possible um, to uh, il further eliminate risk or reduce risk. Again, another resource um, of mental health. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and this is something a critical reminder um, for you, for others, for families, um, or staff, or um, anyone who is in need. There are resources. We have a service provided to our Valley View staff and families um, to be connected with the professional resources through Care Solace. And then there's also a text line, Call for Calm, that is also a great resource and support. So again, important information to continue to share. Um, health and mental health are, are critical factors as we um, continue to press on during the pandemic. Um, I've shared this information previously, so I won't go back into it, but um, we will be providing fall updates on planning and um, bringing the year to a close and making some refinements for the fall um, for planning for a full return for all of our learners. Um, I did want to mention that as we work are working through this process to end the year and plan for the fall, um, we do have the family survey released and we encourage you to um, visit our website, um, take the family survey, um, your voice matters. And we also have a staff survey that um, actually just will be closing this evening. Um, and all of that feedback and, and voice will be used as part of the process to determine what is working well and what can we improve in supporting learners on site as well as remote um, learners and how can we make further refinements and become even stronger um, in the fall. So that, that data, that information that we gather will be part of the planning process. So we thank you for taking the time to give us your feedback. Um, and we'll continue our engagement and communication efforts through our regular social media platforms as well as upcoming board meeting um, on May 24th. At that time, we'll, um, as we get into the summer months, we'll be having more um, additional information about um, the fall. And so that is all we have for the, this evening. And as we wrap some key dates of upcoming celebrations as we end the year for our step learners, eighth grade promotion, um, our last day of school schedule for June 4th, um, and then high school graduation to immediately follow. That's all I have this evening.